All right, in this video, um, we're going to look at some more differentiation rules, mainly two rules, the product rule and the quotient rule. So let's start with the product rule. Okay, what the product rule says is that you're asked to take the derivative of some function of x times another function of x. What that is, is the first, meaning f of x here, times the derivative of the second, plus the second, times the derivative of the first. Uh, I'm running out of space there. Maybe I'll rewrite it. Let's take a look at it right here. I'll just rewrite this mess over here. It's going to be f of x, so the first, times the derivative of the second, plus the second, times the derivative of the first. Now if you want a little mnemonic to remember this rule, I usually tell kids 1 d2, so first times the derivative of the second, this is 1, this is 2, so it's 1 d2 plus 2 d1, so 1 d2 plus 2 d1. Or you can just say f times g prime plus g times f prime. Whatever blows your hair back. Alright, let's take a look at um, Let's see, um, let's say y is equal to 4x minus 2x squared times 3x minus 5. Okay, now, normally what you could do is you don't necessarily need the product rule for this because you could FOIL all this out. In other words, if I wanted to do it without the product rule, I would say y is going to be equal to 12x squared minus 20x what's that minus 6x cubed plus 10x squared I kinda of lost my concentration there for a second hang on let me make sure this is right 4x times 3x is 12x squared 4x times negative 5 is negative 20x, negative 2x squared times 3x would be negative 6x cubed, and negative 2x squared times negative 5 would be positive. Yeah, I'm good. All right. And then you could just go ahead and take the derivative using the sum and difference rule, the constant multiple rule, and all your power rules. So that would be 24x minus 20 minus 18x squared plus 20x. And cleaning it all up we have negative 18x squared what's that 20x and 24x that would be plus 44x and then minus 20 so that's the derivative of this product f, time, f of x times g of x without the product rule let's go over here and take another look at it now if I want to use the product rule let's do it right side by side it's going to be the first times the derivative of the second so y prime is going to be 4x minus 2x squared. The derivative of the second is just 3. 1 d2 plus 2 times the derivative of the first, d1, which is 4 minus 4x. Okay, so again, I took the, deriv I took the first and I multiplied it by the derivative of the second. I took this and multiplied by the derivative of the second. Then I took the second and multiplied by the derivative of the first. Now all I have to do is simplify all this, but this is the derivative. If you wanted to take an x value and get the slope, you could just plug it right into this, do your arithmetic, and you get the slope. But let's clean it up and see if it matches this over here, because remember we didn't use the product rule over here. Let's distribute that 3, so we're going to have 12 minus 6x squared, and we're going to have to FOIL this, 4 times 12x, excuse me, 4 times 3x is going to be 12x, um, uh, first times first, out of time, minus, what's that, minus 12x squared, inner times inner would be what, minus 20, and last times last would be plus 20x. Alright, so let's see if I didn't mess anything up. 
let's do the squares first. We've got negative 12x squared and negative 6x squared. It would be negative 18x squared. Crossing them out, trying to stay neat. Then I got, uh, let me see, I've got 20x here and 12x. That would be 32x. So I messed up somewhere. Let me see, what did I do here? 1d2 plus 2d1, so that would be 12. 3 times 4 would be tw oh, 12x right here. So that would be 12x, um, 3 times negative 2, okay, and then 12x, 3x times 4 is 12x squared, minus 5, is, yep, up. so now I think I should be, okay, so we've got negative 18x squared, 20x, 12x, and 12x, so that would be plus 44x, and then what do I have, negative 20 here. Okay, so I made a little uh, math mistake there. Sorry about that. But basically, you can say that we got the same derivative using the power rule and then just f um, multiplying this out and using our regular standard rules that we learned in the last video. So let's try a couple of examples. Let's see. Um, how about we try y is equal to... Um, oh, let's see. Uh, the square root of x plus 3x times x squared minus 1. So, y prime. Now, what I would do if I were you before I go any further is pause your video and try this one. And come back and watch this. So go ahead and pause it. And I'm going to go ahead and start this. All right, first things first. Now, I could distribute all these and get the product rule, and not even bother with the power rule. But you're going to need the, I'm not the power rule, excuse me, the product rule. But you're going to need that rule. Trust me on that. So let's go ahead and use it. Now, 1d2, the first times the derivative of the second. So that's just going to be the square root of x plus 3x. That's the first. The derivative of the second is just 2x minus 0. So that's 1d2 plus 2 meaning the second times the derivative of the first. And in the last video I said that this derivative comes up a lot. So the derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 square roots of x plus 3. Okay? So let's simplify it. 2x times the square root of x, that's going to be 2x to the 3 halves power plus 6x squared first times the first, what's that going to be? That's going to be x squared over, so that's going to be a one half, two minus a half, so x squared over two radical x. I'll just write it out and I'll figure it out in a second. And then plus three x squared. Inner times inner will be minus one over two square roots of x. And last times last would be minus three. So if we clean all of this up, we've got, um, let me see, we've got 2x to the 3 halves, but this is 4 halves and 3 halves also. So let's write it as 2x to the 3 halves power plus 6x squared, now plus 1 half, now this is x to the 4 halves and x to the 1 half, so that's going to be 1 half x to the 3 halves power plus 3x squared minus one half x to the negative one half minus three and this algebra is getting messy and boring alright so let's just suck it up and keep on going highest power of x is probably going to be 6x squared so 6x squared and 3x squared is going to be 9x squared I'm going to cross the oops let's cross those off now I'm going to go to the next power. I got 2x to the 3 has power and 1 half x to the 3 has power. So 2 and a half would be 2 and a half. Otherwise known as 5 halves x to the 3 has power. And let me see. The next power of x is minus 1 half x to the negative 1 half. That's going to be minus 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus 3. There's your derivative, and if you want to go ahead and put it in radical notation, which you probably ought to, knock yourself out. I'm too tired. Okay, let's go on to one more rule. This is the quotient rule. Now, 
This rule says if you take the derivative of a quotient, in other words, one function of x divided by another function of x, you can't use the power rule sometimes like you could in the other, like you could in the product rule. This one you have to use the quotient rule. That is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all divided by denominator squared. And if you need a little not denomin a uh, little mnemonic to remember this, it's low d high, so low times the derivative of the high, less high d low, so less the deriv uh, the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all over the low squared. So low d high less high d low all over low squared. Let's see how it works. Let's say I were to say to you, find d dx. You guys haven't seen this notation in a while. Of 5x plus 2 over x squared minus 1. Okay. So, so we know that the derivative is equal to low d high. The derivative of 5x plus 2 is just 5. Minus high, don't forget your parentheses in all your algebra, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x. All over the bottom squared. So we're going to simplify that, and we're going to have 5 times x squared is 5x squared minus 5. 2x times, uh, times 5x is going to be uh, 10x squared, negative. 2x times 2, negative, is going to be minus 4x. And on the bottom, I'm not going to bother falling that out. I'm just going to leave that alone. And let's simplify it one more time. Let me see, we have 5x squared, negative 10x squared. That's going to be negative 5x squared, minus 4x, minus 5 all over x squared minus 1 squared. There's your derivative. Alright. Now, let me turn the page. I'll write down another one. I'll have you guys look at it. So, write these down. And pause your videos and try them if you want. And, uh, again, start the video up again. And I'll go through them for you. So the first one I want you to look at, which has a little bit of a trick to it, is find the derivative of x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 2 all over 2x. And the second one you can look at is find the derivative of 5x plus 3 over x squared plus 4x minus 2. So go ahead and pause it if you want to and uh, I'll give it a second and I'll come back and start working these. Alright, here we go. Now you might, don't rush into things in calculus. What you always want to do is stop and look at stuff because a lot of times something you can do that's kind of easy can make your life a lot easier make the problem a lot shorter. In this case, notice there's only one term in the bottom. So this simplifies with some simple algebra. In other words, we can rewrite this x cubed divided by 2x, well that's just going to be 1 half x squared. Right? x cubed divided by x is x squared, 2 in the denominator. Negative 4x squared over 2x, well that's just negative 2x. 4x over 2x is just 2. And negative 2 over 2x would be minus 1 over x. So all this divided kind of simply and gave you this and now we can just, we don't have to bother using the quotient rule, we can just use our power rule. So this is going to equal 2 comes in front, 2 times a half is 1, so that's just x minus 2 plus 0, so I'm not going to bother writing that one, minus 1 over x. Don't forget, minus 1 over x is negative x to the negative 1. 
So it's going to be plus x to the negative 2. So the whole thing simplifies into x minus 2 plus 1 over x squared. And there's your derivative. And this one, on the other hand, over here, doesn't have uh, only one term in the bottom, so you kind of have to use the, uh, the quotient rule. So um, let's see. Do I have any room to do? Do I have room to do this over here? Yeah, yeah I think I do. So let's do low the bottom times the derivative of the top. So times the derivative of the top, which is five. So that's low d high minus high the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, 2x plus 4. This whole thing is over the bottom squared. And I don't know about you, but I'm not squaring this out. We're going to leave that alone. We'll go ahead and clean up the top, though. So on the top, we're going to have 5 distributed to all this. So we're going to have 5x squared plus 20x minus 10. These foil give you minus 10x squared um, minus 20x plus 6x, excuse me, minus 6x, and what's that? Uh, minus 12. Okay, let's combine like terms and then we'll call it a night. So we've got 5x squared, no other x squared, so we'll just rewrite that. Okay, we've got lots of x, so we've got 20x, negative 10x, so we're going to be 10x, negative 10x, negative 16x. So I got negative 16x here, and so I got rid of that, 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 and that. And now I've got negative 10 minus 12 would be negative 22. All over x squared plus 4x minus 2 squared. All right, I'm done. If you need any more practice, you can just Google this stuff. There's tons of practice on the Internet. Grab a textbook, go to the library, do something. But for God's sakes, practice this stuff because the odds of it can get hard, and uh, you definitely don't want to slack on it. All right.